I'll introduce myself. I'm Bill Rita. I'm the senior director here at, at of director of communications at 311. I less on the technical side. So if there are any technical questions, I hope Zachary uh, can, can handle those. I'm more on the business side, the business behind the data. So I'll talk about that. Also excited to announce um, a, a, some enhancement that uh, the data set has, not the data set itself, but uh, something that is used with the data set and talk about uh, what to expect what we expect to add in the future, in the near future, actually. So, um, so that's it. Yeah. So let's let's get into it. First, I'll give you some background in three one one in general, so you have context. That's what I hope to get out of this presentation and discussion that we have. That uh, while the data is robust, it 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 it. it it lacks context a lot of time and and when people reach out to me to understand w what the data is and 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 how is it you know um what's the context behind it that's a lot of the story um and the enhancement we made is going to help that a lot so uh so let's pull back a little bit uh, uh as zachary said uh we've had our 20 uh, we've been in business for 20 years we launched March of 2003, two decades ago, um, as everyone should know, uh, we are the city's non-emergency so source for government information and services, right? Uh, our mission is pretty simple and has been the same for the last 20 years um, and no need to change. We provide fast and easy access to government services and information with the highest possible level of customer service. That's what 311 does as an organization. Um, of course, size and scope, we serve the entire city. So that's, you know, over, you know, 8.6 million customers, residents, business, commuters, visitors, um, just about anyone who needs information about the city. Of course, we're 24 seven, we operate in 175 languages. That's through, we have Spanish speaking uh, representatives, but when we need to have a conference call with a with an interpreter, we do that. We have 2,000 answers to questions, right? So, what does what does that mean? That means our database of information. If you go to the 311 portal and you 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 type in something, you'll see uh, content. That content is uh, curated from uh, city 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 agencies. We have uh, staff here at 311 that has a day-to-day -day relationship with all the agencies in the city. And when new information is, um, if an agency has a new program or public facing information, they, they give it to us and we, we put it in the system um, to make it available for everyone. That relationship goes back 20 years. So um, it's also not only information, but we work with the agencies directly on the service request, which you know, I'll talk about a little bit later. And the staff here, of course, uh, government employees are the frontline staff, and that's myself as well. Um, customer demand. In 2022, we did 35 million contacts. Um, it's about half people called 311 and about half used online or mobile. That's that ratio has kind of been in play for the last, I would say, five, six years that uh, people still call us. Um, well, I have data to, to show you how many calls we got, how many people online we have. So you get a sense of, of how. Uh, Customers contact 311. We we hit a milestone uh, June of of last year. We we hit our 50, 500 millionth customer contact. Actually, that was a big milestone for us. Um, and of course, we had uh, the 20th anniversary, which I have a little a little chart here. I'm going to show everyone in a second. Um, and it probably goes without saying, <clears throat> New York City 311. Is is the large is the largest 311 service in, in North America, and we account for 55% of all 
calls to 311s in, in, in the US. So we, we, are, we are very large. Um, <clears throat> this, this, I took this, this is a screenshot I took from a piece of um, a report that was issued last week to commemorate the 20 year anniversary. And it just gives you a sense of what what moves the needle um, when people need to contact 311. Always in times of, of uh, um, city city uh, city uh, emergencies, uh, the MTA strike was one of the first times that 311 um, had a very large public. Uh, view the mayor at that time bloomberg uh said to call 311 and really made a difference to 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 the call to the level of calls we had uh, up until that time which were where you know the service was was new um but when uh, the the public needed to know uh up-to-date information about uh, any particular event they they know to call 311 as you can see um Snow, blizzard, Irene, Sandy, blizzard, winter storm, you know, these these really have really big impacts on 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 311. And um, we, as I said earlier, we have information in the system and the system and, and relations with agencies. So when uh, a service is altered because of uh, an, a city event, we, we get that information um, as soon as possible and, and we update it. Uh, we update the content at 311 daily. Um, you know, we can update it on the weekend if we need, and we do, um, just to, to keep current. Uh, we can't have customers going to 311 and, you know, not updating something for, for days when, when that information is needed. So that's, that's um, one of the practices we have. Um, oh yeah, so I, you know what, I missed, I missed one, one, um, one slide here that I don't think I added. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, I can talk to it though. Um, so I already jumped to the, to the, to the fun stuff. So 311, many ways to contact 311. And, um, uh, as I said earlier, primary ways still by phone call about 50 percent of the of the calls we you know of the volume that we receive the contacts we receive are by via phone but we also have a web portal where uh information and complaints can be filed we have a mobile app where there are about three dozen complaints that you can submit directly through through the app we are reachable by social media. You, we can file a service request um, for you via social media. And we also do it through text, um, texting program that we have. Those numbers are lower, social media and texting are lower um, by far uh, online and the call center um, repre represents the most. But the flow of how uh, the information goes, the customer will call We'll contact 311 online or using the mobile app or social media. We will provide information or take uh, a service request. And that service request is then passed to the agency for fulfillment. The agency then um, responds, updates the service request, and that update goes uh, back to 311 or the customer if they give customer information on the status of the complaint. Then the complaints information and, and statuses are updated daily um, in the open data set. So so that's that's the flow. That's the flow. So what so the what I'm presenting now is the is the home page of the the service request data. As you can see the service requests we have service request information back from 2010 to the present, um, there are millions and millions of rows. We do about three million complaints a year, um, so that's there's quite a bit of data there. Um, 
<clears throat> we also have historical data dating back to 2003 to 2009. Those are in spreadsheets. Those are available um, as well. So what is new? Uh, we expanded the data dictionary, and this is really exciting. I'm going to stop sharing this. And um, a lot, a lot, a lot of work went in, went into this. Um, one of the most frequent questions I get, I, I, I would get asked is, um, how do I know what's what's in the data set? Because it is a little bit overwhelming. Um, so this data set, this data dictionary now breaks breaks it down very, very granular. So if you want to know all the complaints, the problem types of that NYPD or any agency, I'm going to pick NYPD. Um, so, you, so like you know, you can filter, and then you can see they take all these type of complaints, right? Um, you can further drill down on this. So, uh, fireworks, noise, residential. <clears throat> And then you can see the problem types that are associated with it, right? So uh, not only do they take noise residential, but it's broken down even further. Banging, pounding, loud music, party, loud talking, loud TV. Now, reporters, council members, elected officials, community boards, uh, neighborhood associations, just about anybody um, would, would, would get great use out of this because now you get to know what's in the data set and then you can go look for it in the data set instead of you know looking you know looking through through um, taking a exporting a block and then having to filter it you get to know exactly what's in the data set um, there's a separate section for uh, for HPD data because they're 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 their data set up a little bit differently so you, you you'll, you'll have access to that as well um, Prior to this, this this was not available, um, and the only way really to do this was to like reverse engineer it. Is like to do a data dump and then filter and then you know take out the take out the um, the the uh, repeats. So um, column information and column information. There's more detail than the column information. So this really gives a a, a huge benefit. For anyone using the data, people that are, are 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 new to the data, I do highly recommend you go to you go to the the website and 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 look at this and to have an understanding of, of of what's in the data set. Um, and um, yeah, what else I wanted to show you? Uh, I guess I'll show you. The, um, Yeah, this is the data set itself. Um, so, so I guess I'm sharing. Okay, and here's here's the data set itself. Um, as mentioned, it gets updated um, every 24 hours, and you can see the last data update um, was yesterday. And uh, a lot of sanitation, a lot of NYPD stuff. Um, and um, can create this is example is how I often do it. If you want to see anything filed since March, you filter it, and then you can you can export the data um, any way you want. So that's. That's 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 the data set. Um, this go back to this. Sorry, I'm jumping around, guys. This is uh, you know, um, yeah. Um, so what's to come? So that's that's the data dictionary. So I highly recommend everyone to uh, take a look at that. And what's to come? Excited about this. Um, we're going to add police precinct. Uh, I spelled that precinct spelled wrong. Uh, sanit uh, sanitation stations and council districts. So um, that is we're working on getting those columns added to the data set, which I think people will find very beneficial. And 
Um, yeah, so stay tuned. Uh, so, yep, that's all I had to present. Um, I told you it was just a few slides to give a little background um, and the update on the, the data set and what's to come. So, Zachary, I'll take questions now if anybody has questions. Um, I thank you for your time and, and I hope I can answer your questions. Yeah, thanks so much, Bill. There, there's a bunch of questions that came in in the chat. I don't know if you could see it. Happy to um, start pulling some out. Oh, yeah, look at that. <clears throat> Will there be data set for the community board's actions? Mm, I don't know what that means, community board's actions. Um, community board location will be added. I don't know what actions means in, in that case. Um, community board info will be searchable. Oh, uh, when you say info, the the district will be added, so it's more of a geo uh, a, a geo uh, filter of 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 that community. Um, so a community board. Oh, I got you. Uh, community boards there already, I think. Right. Yeah, you could definitely look at community boards right now. Um, I would yeah. say, and there was a question here about like, how do I see. Um, like service requests or, or popular um, issues in, in my community. And I think there's there's a couple of things you can do that will take you there and also allow you to look at this by community board. Um, if, you, if you could certainly look at the data set directly, but there's also a map um, that 301 provides of, of these service requests. And you could look at like a specific neighborhood, you could filter down even to your street. Um, and I, I just put a link where you, you could find um, yeah. find that map. And I think another thing um, that you can use is I, I mentioned before that we are um, producing Open Data Week this year and, and every year actually for the last seven in partnership with Beta NYC and um, something that they've worked on specifically intended for community boards is a product called BoardStat. And that takes um, 311 data and breaks it down um, community board by community board. Um, and I just put a link to that in the chat as well. But I think those are two options if you want to look at community board data um, or if you want to look at data about a specific neighborhood or area and you don't necessarily want to page through um, 30 million requests or, or, or filter that data. Okay, I'm reading some of the, the questions in the chat. Morning, a lot of people introducing themselves. It's actually my first open data meeting. I'm happy to later talk. Thank you, Alan. Um, <clears throat> feel free to put Ah, is it true that the, that the uh, former mayor Bloomberg earns money every time 311 is used? Mm, no, it's public service. Previous, I saw from previous person, they don't all know automated. And, and if you could just repeat, I, I think the question, Bill, as you're answering it for anyone who, who can't see. Yeah, okay, I'll do that, I'll do that. Um, or I'm happy to summarize too, if that would be helpful. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I saw from previous presentations that 301 data, although automated and updated daily, has quite a few not normalized fields, such as burrow some burrows sometimes with different casing recorded as different burrows or non-normalized agency names. What is that if it it's an automated data set? Zachary, I don't I don't don't understand again, this sounds more of like a technical thing. Yeah, I, I think I'm happy to talk to this. Um, I guess if, if there's a specific question you, you have, I would definitely encourage you to contact our help desk um, if you notice an issue or, or have a question. Um, it's nyc.gov slash askopendata. Um, and I'll put that in the chat. But I think, um, and Bill, correct me if I'm wrong here, that 3-on-1 is, is a combination of um, sort of normalized and standardized fields, um, like, like drop downs for, for certain things, but it also contains a lot of fields that are inputted by um, both the, the call takers and, and also people um, who, who put in service requests directly through the 3-on-1 website. And, and with that, some of the information is, is normalized and standardized and some of it isn't. Um, so the thing that is automated is the, the data update. Um, so there, there's a certain set of tables that every evening are updated automatically. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that for every value, um, it will always be exactly the same. I think the, the three-on-one data um, 
it covers so many topics and there are so many possible variations that there, there are inevitably going to be some things where you're, if you're looking at a certain issue or trying to compare across agencies, it, it might be a little bit um, more confusing. But um, again, um, you could certainly reach out to, to us for any questions you have. I would also I, say I, the, I, yeah, I was gonna say Beta NYC Slack channel, which I'll put a link to is also a great place yeah, to ask. I, I would also questions. add that there's a lot of uh, data that's pulled uh, behind the scenes that are not, when you submit a service request are not actually put in, right? Like the XY coordinates, that's all the metadata that's pulled behind the scenes um, that uh, is we, we make available, but not necessarily uh, part of the service requ request structure that that is the form that is built. So some of that data may 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 not line up, and I, I don't know that that information well enough. Sorry, well, it was a good question. Um, new question. I used I uh, very interested in in NYC three one one service, but also how can it be brought to other New York State municipalities? Uh, I will say there are many 311s across this, the United States and, and a lot of 311 receives a lot of delegations of, of municipalities, not just from the United States, but actually from around the world, endeavoring to do a similar, a similar thing, basically have a, a non-emergency public service. So they come to 311 to, to see how we're set up. Um, often have conversations with the other 311s when, when they want to do an expansion of something. So there's a, there's a, there's a dialogue within the 311 community on, on, on best practices and, and, and how to, and how to get things started. But there are many 311, um, across, across, across the nation. Um, I guess, Bill, if someone wants, is from another municipality and wants to learn more, what would be the yeah. best way to get in touch? Yeah, contact me. <laughs> um, my, my name is, you can, you can, you can Google me um, in NYC.gov. I'm the communications director, so I often get um, emails directly from, from those folks. Um, so, yeah, so anyone who, who doesn't have and, and, and wants to, to talk about it, uh, feel free to contact me. What software CRM does 301 use to receive calls? We use Microsoft Dynamics. Prior, we 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 transitioned to this this platform in 2019. Prior to that, we were on uh, Siebel Oracle, and um, we cut over, like I said, in 2019 to Dynamics, Microsoft Dynamics. We're very happy with it. Um, very stable. I would like to know how to retrieve data, like how many other requests like mine were recorded at a particular location and how many requests were responded to by NYPD. Yeah, so um, I, I already yeah. attempted to answer this one um, yeah. in the chat. I think there's a few different things. One, and I'll, I'll just bump this up, you could attend one of our um, discovering NYC open data classes and learn how to filter a 301 data set directly. And you could also check out the other two links that I put in to both the official map of 301 requests where you can see by location, by agency, or the board stat map, which is focused specifically on New York City's community boards, but will allow you to do a very similar sort of exercise. Um, and if you're not finding luck with any of those, again, um, feel free to send us an email. I don't know, Bill, if there's anything mm -hmm. else I'm, I'm missing there. But no, no, I think there should, be, should be a yeah. few great resources for you to, for that kind yeah. of question. Are there any agencies or organizations that utilize this 301 open data really well? That's a good question. Um, I know that the data set is one of the most uh, used data sets for, for um, individual dashboards. Uh, I think uh, Zachary, correct me if I'm wrong. Over 6,000 um, people have uh, dashboards made out of it, so it, it, it's it's quite used. You say, well, I mean that's I mean I think I think uh, uh, Beta NYC of course uses it well, but I, I think uh, understanding what the data is and what you want out of it. Um, I mean, there's. Again, there's data back to 2010. You can see 
uh, depending on what you're really looking for. If you want to see the increase or decrease of, of any particular complaint type over time, you can do that if that is of that is of interest. And of course, um, it's, it's used for policy decisions, right? Um, a lot of times the, the um, council elected officials uh, would, would, would see, see data trends um, and, and, and use that to, 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 to um, create, create policies. So I think just like any data set, it's what, what you think you can get out of it um, and understand what the data is. Zachary, would you add anything to that? And that's a good question though. No, I think that's, I think that's a good answer. Um, yeah. Three on one data is, is used by every city agency. I, I see we have some people from the controller's office from DOHMH specifically asking how they can get more three on one data. Um, but there, there's always um, a, a lot of people in city government that are using it. And really anyone um, who's, who's looking to, to start some analysis uh, of New York City is, is, is many people are starting with that through one data set. Um, we, we talk to a lot of um, high school and um, university uh, data education classes and data science um, students, and, and they frequently use three on one data. Um, a lot of New York City based um, organizations, nonprofits, for profits use three on one data. So it, it, it is, um, as Bill was saying, one of the, the most popular data sets because it covers such a wide swath of, of New York City um, government activity and, and New York City um, requests and, and complaints from people. Thank you, Zachary. Um, so here's a question from Igor, uh, who works for the Comptroller's office, asking if other information that's not presented in open data is, is, is it available by FOIL? I think, yeah, there's just in general, you can FOIL, you know, a lot of uh, city information and, and, and 311 data is no different. Um, so yeah, that FOIL request actually goes to OTI. Um, it's, it's not really handled here at 311. And I, I don't even know, you know, I don't have, I don't have insight into the FOIL process. But yeah, definitely. It's, I, I think you can, you can FOIL if you, if you wanted to. Um, and I think the, mm -hmm. there was a similar request um, from Shaky Sherpa at, at the health department um, where the, the, they receive three on one complaints data, but don't get images or videos that were submitted by users. Um, I think for, for both of those, um, feel free to reach out to, to us directly. Um, yeah. and, and we could, we can point you in the right direction. Um, I'll put my email in the chat, um, or our team email rather in the chat. Um, and that way. Yeah, definitely do that. You, um, you can, yeah, we, we, we could certainly, um, point you in the right direction on, on, on both of those. Yeah, sure. Bob. So question from Ryan, um, nope, just jumped. Um, uh, when a 301 complaint is forwarded to the NYPD, what, what does that process involve? Well, I would say the process, um, it, it doesn't matter the agency. From, from the 301 perspective, when, when we work with the agency to, to set up the, the complaint form, right? So agencies can only um, respond to complaints that's within their jurisdiction, um, that, they're, that they're legally required to. Uh, and th th the agency will tell us what information is, is pertinent to their, to their responding to it. So when we, when we build the form, we build, we build with those requirements and then uh, 311 does the intake, right? You call 311 and you go with 311 online, you fill out the information and then, and then you send it to the agency. When you send it to the agency, 311, it, it like leaves out of 311 and is in the possession of the agency. Um, as mentioned earlier, we do about three, three million complaints and the city has generates 3 million complaints a year and um it, it and, and goes to to an endpoint where that agency has their processes in in handling things and then they are required to update with a status with a status um so i can't speak on behalf of agencies work once they receive the the, the complaint and, and all agencies uh, work a little bit differently because their work is differently, right? So, so um, HPD has inspectors, um, NYPD has uh, police officers that, that respond to, to non-emergency non complaints through, 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 
uh, requests through through 311. And um, agencies, it's, it's good to note uh, for this group that there's every agency has a, 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 a an SLA. It's a, SLA means um, a service level agreement on, on, on the response time to, to a complaint. Um, that information is, is given when you file a complaint. So, so every agency has different, different SLAs based on the, 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 the type of work that they have to do and the priority of, of that work. If it's extremely important, um, it'll have a higher priority and if it's a little bit less important and a little bit longer days and sometimes weeks. So that's, that's something to note. Um, I, I, I don't know if I answered your question, Ryan, but um, that's that's basically the process. 301 refers complaints to an agency. An agency has a, a process behind the scenes, um, and then makes the update and sends the update to the to the customer. Um, how does 301 hope to improve in the future? That's a good question. We've been at this for 20 years, and um, you know it's kind of weird to think now but in 2003 we were just a call center any city municipality who meets us of course not going to start with just a call center it's very expensive um and you know the world has has is you know is very different now so having on uh, online presence mobile presence uh is very very important now and uh, that information actually is in our data set if you even if you're interested to see who, who submits service requests. We have by channel, um, if it's submitted by the mo mobile app, if it's submitted online, if it's submitted in the call center. Um, and you'll see trends over time that, you know, a lot of people use and, and different complaints could, could be more um, prevalent uh, online because it's easier or uh, people call 311 because, um, you know, here's an interesting thing to, to tell everyone. Um, if you file a complaint through online, the mobile app, or call 311, they get handled exactly the same. When I, when, I, when I say get handled, they immediately get sent to the, to the agency. The agency um, knows that if it was online or not, but, but it's, it's a complaint equal to, to anything else. Uh, calling doesn't give more weight than online and vice versa. Um, they just first in, first out type of thing. Mm. And um, what was it? <clears throat> Oh, future. So um, this is this was the question. This is what I wanted to, to say on on this topic. So we started as a call center, and then and then we we expanded to online. And then when when we did that, we we expected that uh, call volume was going to drop, right? Because no, why why would anyone call us when they can they could go online? That's not what happened. Um, call uh, call volume stayed steady, and sometimes increased based on on the year. Uh, but what what we did do is increase access to city government. And that's very exciting. People who use a mobile app like may not want to go online for whatever reason and don't want to call 311. So when we added the mobile app, we increased the circle of the pie, which is great. Um, one thing that we're looking to do is to be more accessible and uh, one application that we're looking to stand up um, within this fiscal year is, is uh, WhatsApp, right? So that's a, a platform that uh, 311 is not on now. Um, and we're working to, to, to get on that platform so we can interact with, with customers um, using, using that platform. So uh, if, if history repeats itself, we will see an increase in, in, in user in, in use of 311 um, reaching uh, a wider audience. Um, that was a good question. Right, thank you for your presentation. Can you talk a little bit about call increases you mentioned and for what reason it happened? And were there specific topics that were addressed to you more than usual last year? Well, that's a good question, and 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 a, 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 a an analysis of the the data from 2010. You got to take a calendar out and a, and a newspaper and and kind of map it to to what the city was experiencing. Obviously, huge events like Sandy, um, uh, blackouts, MTA strike, going to have a really 
a huge impact on the you know the constituents need for information and 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 need from the city so year to year like i always say jokingly when we don't have snow it's um it's a bad year for us because uh, our volume be lower uh versus a very very snowy winter um the 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 day with the highest call vo call volume only not not including online call volume it was 276,000 calls in, in in January I think it was January 2011 blizzard uh, that was that was that was incredible people wanted to know um, all all sorts all sorts of things uh, garbage collection ASP suspensions um, or courts open city you know offices open uh, it was really really um, really had an impact on the city so you know um so it depends on what's happening in the city of course covid uh couldn't expect that and and that had you know uh, impact on um calls for covid information um you know so so it, it really depends um but the the thing 301 is 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 good at and and working with the city and the relations we have with all with all with all the city agencies is is being prepared for when something does happen and reacting very quickly. Um, so I, I remember in Sandy, uh, price gouging. So uh, DCWP uh, very quickly was able to take complaints on that. Um, and we were able to get information in the system to, to, to respond to that. So it really depends on what's happening in the city. And it's, and, you know, it's like I've been here for over 10 years and it's, um, it's you know, it's every day is like a new day because new programs uh, roll out, um, IDNYC, an amazing program that didn't, you know, you know, it, it didn't exist and then it did exist. Um, and that had, that had, had impact. So, so yeah, when you work, when you live and work in, in New York city, um, you know, a lot of interesting things happen and it's reflected in the data. If you take a look at it. Yeah. One, one specific anecdote there, actually, um, Bill mentioned Hurricane Sandy and, and there is a, a map that I think many people have produced. You could produce it from, from the data set. Um, but specifically the parks department was looking at where you could actually see based on call volumes, um, over time, you can see the path of the storm directly outlined by like down tree calls in particular. Um, that, that it's actually not that uncommon during, um, high wind events where you, you can, you can see that reflected in, in the data set if you're mapping out these service requests. Oh, so this is a good question uh, from Sherpa. Sure, so um, it says that they often, again, this is health, often get complaints that are not really within the jurisdiction, uh, the unit's jurisdiction. So this is a misrouting. Misrouting happens sometimes. Um, and when, when that happens, uh, agencies uh, can bring it to 301's attention. We'll review why it was misrouted, if it was. Uh, if it was a, an error on the handling um, uh, on our behalf, or if the content wasn't clear, we, we will we will adjust that. But this, but this particular question is in those cases would like uh, to refer the complaint to a different department within 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 health or a different city agency. Can that feature uh, like that be integrated in the existing 301 CRM? So that that's a good question. Um, there are a, a handful of agencies that do have interagency relations and we do have one instant where 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 this is the case so it was a, a pilot if you will um and it seems to be working well so i would i would you know have to talk to reach out to my contact at health and uh, have a conversation with her uh, about that it would take development in the system and that's you know that could be I don't want to say a challenge, but it could be, you know, there's a cost and, and resources and and um, a lot of a lot of uh, work has to be done on that end. But that shouldn't prevent something that that makes something a little bit easier. So um, that's a good comment. And, you know, I, I, I'll take it to my my uh, my health uh, contact um, and have a conversation with her. Been a rising. OK, question. Has there been a rise in complaints over extremely noisy cars since April of 2022 when the sleep act went into effect? Um, finding excessively loud cars. 
finding excessively loud cars. Um, my point is to see if the Sleep Act has been effective. So uh, noise from, I would have to look at the data. This is, this is the one thing, you know, although 311 uh, generates, generates the data, um, unless it's a, a huge citywide impact that has thousands of calls, which does happen, um, 100, 100 complaints in, 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 a, in, a, in a week for any particular topic will not, will not move the needle with, within 311 to, to see that. Now, the agency itself may see that. Um, so I, 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 wouldn't have, I wouldn't have that information. What you can do is go to the 311 data set and, and look for the time parameters on noise from vehicle and, and, and see, 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 see what the data looks like. Anything to add to that, Zachary? I will just continue to say that if you want to get a better sense of how to use a 301 data set or just open data, and generally we do have introductory classes we're running for the rest of the week, and then we also will be running those throughout the year. Um, there's actually one that starts right after this session, but um, also one tomorrow evening and, and Friday evening. And I'll, I'll put another link to those in the chat. So, oh, you, you answered, uh, Francesca. Okay, good. All right. Um, good. I, that was, that, I think that was everything. Um, these were great questions, by the way. Um, I, I'm always interested and in, in amazed um, the reception to, to, to the data and how important it is to the, to the city community uh, and people that use it. Um, I'm always, I'm an advocate for people having the best understanding of the data. Uh, so uh, any questions, please feel free to reach out to me directly and happy to, to, to answer any questions offline.